Hey guys, uh, sorry it's been on a couple weeks since the last video. Uh, today we're going to do a video focusing on some more bandage techniques. Uh, this is not going to be so much focused on uh, outward injuries, but more of an actual uh, fracture and specifically uh, the humerus uh, of a dog. And so usually you know, these can be really hard to bandage and splint so for kind of stabilization. So what we're going to do is I want to show you on Gypsy again. Um, we're going to get her back up on the table here in a second. She's just kind of roaming around the garage right now. Uh, we're going to go over a very specific way to bandage the limb actually against the chest, uh, sort of like you would put a, someone's arm in a sling. Um, and it's essentially going to look sort of like this and then it's going to bandage around it and it's just going to hold it nice and tight up against her chest so that it doesn't move and then that way you'll be able to safely and a little bit more comfortably transport them uh, to where they need to go and then at the end of the video I'll we'll do kind of talk more theory about kind of doing the same thing for uh, either kind of a proximal femur fracture, so high up towards the hip. Uh, it's actually also something that we use. It's called an Emer sling. Uh, so it's a specific kind of bandage technique that we can actually use if a dog or cat dislocates their hip and that um, the head of that femur is actually outside of the acetabulum of the hip. Um, and if we can reduce that, we will put them in this kind of bandage, uh, and we call it an Emer sling, but it's really just a bandage to hold the limb in place. So we'll talk a little bit about that at the end of the video as well. Um, kind of go over some brief techniques on that. Um, these are going to take up quite a bit of <laughs> material, so we're going to have to um, order up some more bandage material before we move on to some other potential um, videos and things like that. So we'll get on that. And so I'll get Gypsy up here and we'll get started. Okay guys, so here we've got Gypsy up on the table. Uh, so I think you guys aren't going to have to <laughs> look at my ugly mug for the majority of this video. Uh, so got her sitting up here. So like I said, we're going to be looking at bandaging and a specific way to bandage the thoracic limb um, and keep that stable uh, for transport if the humerus which again because um, some people I get this question a lot as like where everything is um, so you know a dog's shoulder blade their scapula sits right here and so this is going to come down to the point of their shoulder which is right here their humerus is going to come down to here which is their elbow and they got their radius and their ulna down to their carpus down to the metacarpal bones down to the digits so that's the way the dog's leg is laid out so like so we're going to be stabilizing it in case of a humeral fracture right there so um, i might have to kind of move around with this one because it's a specific kind we'll get her up here so the difficulty especially out in the field with finding something that could potentially splint this bone is obviously its proximity and the way it sits up against the uh, with the chest and you can't really get something on the other side of it and you can't bandage all the way around it because you've only got about you know from there to there uh, that's not actually into the armpit or what we call the axillary region so what you can do is you can actually move the leg in a very specific manner in a very specific manner to keep that leg actually by bandaging it to the chest itself. Um, so what you're going to need to do, obviously if this bone is broken, especially if there's um, you know, maneuverability in it, if there's you know, translocation, if, they're not, this, if there's displacement of those two pieces, then it's going to be obviously very uncomfortable. So you know, early on we talked about um, putting um, the putting muzzles on dogs. So this would be a moment where that would actually be pretty useful and definitely recommended. So what we're gonna end up doing is we're gonna take the leg and actually bring it up like this and across so you can kind of see 
Let's see if I can cap you or her. So you can actually see where this is sitting like this along the chest. And then we're gonna bandage that whole thing along the chest. Stand up, little girl. Okay, so we're gonna show you how to do this bandage right now. So you're actually gonna use the same kind of bandage material that you would um, like we did before. So the white cotton, actually you're not really gonna use stirrups, but you can use the white cotton, the brown gauze, and the vet wrap. So you're gonna wanna take the leg, bring it up to the chest, Sort of, let me, let me show you. So this is actually, so the side of her foot is actually gonna be sitting up against her chest. And like I said before, this would be a moment where having someone to help you is always nice. But then like I was mentioning, we went over how to make muzzles so this is a good area good time because this is not always the most comfortable if you're out in the field so mostly what we're doing is we're coming up over that limb and across the chest so you can see Like I said, this takes a lot of material, so having extra, this is where having extra gauze and extra rolls can really help. Like I said, you're just going to basically come up and around. She thinks this is the weirdest thing that's ever happened to her. She has no idea why I'm doing this to her today. And so like I said, so you can sort of see how it resembles a sling on a person, how they kind of keep their hand up like this. So it just really pushes this leg up against their chest to keep it immobile. same time next we're gonna do the brown cream gauze like I said you really have to have some dexterity sometimes to bandage pets by yourself especially with the the cotton's always the trickiest part because obviously it does Tear easily. It's not the tightest. Yeah, definitely a little bit more tension with the brown gauze. And same as we talked about with the basic bandage you just really want to get as much of it covered as you can so I am going to move my camera here because I think it's going to be easier than moving her stay stay I don't know if she's going to try to lay down on me <laughs> Bring your this around to kind of 
show you the other side. So you can see how it goes around that limb. Okay. Just like before, I'm going to pull this out. I'm actually going to start and get it. It feels a little bit different when you're doing this because it's not quite as. Obviously, you're pulling a lot more material out. And then I probably won't go over this whole thing, but again, same basic principle. Come around. And you just want to make enough passes to keep everything covered and then to keep that leg in place. she can't move. So then you'd come up and obviously try and cover as much of this as possible. Um, so there's not a lot of this extra stuff showing. So, and you can, what I should have done as well is try to get this kind of over and around her elbow. Cause you can see her elbow sticking out a little bit. Sometimes they can kind of pull that out. Um, so, um, like I said, so definitely try and maneuver that, get that around there, and then come up and cover this. I'm not going to use all of my vet wrap today um, to do this, so especially because she looks <laughs> completely bewildered as to what's going on. So this is how you would and get this up, stabilize this front limb against the chest so that she's not putting pressure on that humerus if that's fractured so you can get her to the vet and have that dealt with um, so most of the time with a humeral fracture like that you know we're going to end up uh, sometimes surgery is certainly the best if there is a fracture there I mean surgery with a plate uh, the majority of the time is definitely um, recommended it's one of the fastest ways those bones are going to heal uh, obviously there are times where they do we do use um, splints and casts and things like that but uh, especially for this high up so as you can see she did try to move and she can't really once you get that brown gauze and the vet wrap on it she can't really get it all out um, so the, uh, the white the white gauze the cotton gauze is certainly the trickiest part but like I said this is how you would really want to get her stabilized uh, get her to the vet so um, I'll kind of I'm going to get this off of her and then we'll talk about again kind of how the theory works with the Emer sling all right all right so we got her all <laughs> cleaned up from before uh, so just again to talk kind of briefly I'm not going to go through the whole banding process of it uh, but just to kind of show you the positioning of the leg with what we call an Emer sling. So again, this would be, we use this most commonly when we're, once we've reduced uh, a hip luxation or you know, dislocated hip. Um, basically, you know, all you need to do, but you can use this if you think that's happened or if there's an obvious fracture up here in the femur. Um, like I said, you can use this to kind of stabilize the leg, keep it from, you know, banging around, moving around having them accidentally try and put weight on it, especially for a car ride. Um, so really, all you need to do, again, it's not gonna be comfortable, but you just get the leg as high as possible, kind of tuck it in, and like I said, you just bring this in here, and then you're gonna wanna just bandage around it. Just start, keep pressure there, bandage around, come under here. Let's see, with a male dog, one of the difficulties is obviously bringing that bandage up and around the prepuce so that they can still urinate 
if they need to. Um, obviously, this is more of a concern if we're actually doing something like an Emer sling where it's going to end up staying on there for about three to four weeks while we let that dislocation, that luxation heal. Uh, less of a concern, you know, if you're just several hours even to a vet hospital. Um, but so what you, like I said, what you can do is you can bring that up kind of in, uh, bandage around that leg, and then you can kind of cut them. You also want to, if you're bringing the bandage around and over the top, coming down along the back and getting, when this is up like this, catching this hawk and really, you know, securing that leg in an upward position. Um, it's not a position they really like to be in. Obviously, if there's a complete fracture through that femur, and again, especially if there's real obvious, you know, flopping around, uh, real obvious, um, basically displacement of those two fracture pieces, it might be a little bit easier. Certainly gonna be a little bit easier if there is uh, a dislocation as well. So uh, that's gonna be, again, I'm not really gonna, if you really want to, as we go through this, if you really want me to, just drop a line in the comments uh, or reach out to me on Instagram and um, we could do a full version of that bandage uh, if people are really interested. But for right now, uh, you know, if everyone thinks that they have kind of an idea about it, um, <laughs> we'll just go with that. So, uh, but that's gonna be for when we have fractures, uh, obviously dislocations of the hip, fractures of the humerus. Uh, those are gonna be how we really wanna stabilize those limbs um, in order to get them safely and as comfortably as possible to your vet so that they can be adequately dealt with. So, uh, all right, well, so that's it for this round. If you have any questions or you know, want to talk about anything specific, again, please drop me a line in the comments, reach out on Instagram, uh, let me know what you guys are interested in. Any, again, specific questions about first aid or um, you know, kind of health in general of your pets, uh, especially as far as you know, hunting goes, things like that, we'll probably um, probably get some information together. We'll probably do another sit down chat uh, here coming up about uh, some metabolic issues that we can see. Uh, maybe I'll go ahead and cover uh, bloat or GB as kind of a topic as well. Uh, talk about hypoglycemic events, things like that. So uh, stay tuned. And like I said, let me know if you have any questions about specific topics. Thanks. Bye, guys.